Well, good afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome you to the Conscious Life Expo post-conference. I love this expo because we, we bring in some of the top talent around. And the gentleman that I'm going to introduce is one of the people that is definitely tops in his field and has such incredible information to share. So I would like you to join me in giving a rousing Conscious Life Expo welcome to David Wilcox. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. You know, 2012 is about a new birth, and, and now that I have my own umbilical cord, <laughs> we have a great symbolic uh, reference for that. So. This is going to be a bridge where we're going to start with the 2012 Enigma material that I didn't get to finish yesterday because literally we had the line for that room wrapped around two halls in this hotel. It was enormous. How we got all those people into that room, for those of you who remember, I don't know how it worked, but it was, it was a divine miracle in and of itself that we actually got the people in. So this is about what the government is like for most people right now. <laughs> <laughs> We've gotten into this illusion that the government is our benevolent father figure and protector. And more and more recently now, it's, it's feeling as if, uh, you know, what's the surprise is not what we're expecting. So many people are awakening to cosmic consciousness and uh, higher concepts of metaphysics and spirituality. And this is going to be a true uh, master class in what's really going on. So three years ago, I was at this conference, and I met Billy Blake, who should be here, but he's not here yet. Uh, he's going to be running around with a handheld camera. Um, and we decided to do a film together. The film is called Convergence, as many of you, or probably all of you know. Uh, so that film deals with the idea that the underlying fabric of this universe is consciousness, which is what all the old mystics and all the old religious traditions have been saying for thousands of years. Now... What I offer is a much more elaborate and intricate spin on the notion of a consciousness field than you've probably ever seen anywhere else. Of course, it goes without saying that for those of you who haven't seen this, when they don't, when they haven't seen it before, there's a gasp in the audience, but you all are well initiated. Uh, Edgar Casey and myself, there's obviously a facial similarity there. Uh, this is my brother and Casey's uh, first guy, Dr. Ketchum, who got him out there in the world. My father, after a Metallica concert, that's why he's sneering. <laughs> and the squire, Edgar Casey's father. My father would only shop at the squire shop, and everybody called Casey's father the squire. This is my best friend Jude and Edwin Blumenthal uh, from the Casey tradition, one of his uh, principal investors. Jude and I did marvelous uh, music together in high school, at least we thought so at the time. <laughs> and this is my friend from uh, college, Christopher and uh, his corresponding reincarnation, uh, Morton Blumenthal. This is my good friend from college, uh, Angelica, and this is Edgar's wife, uh, Gertrude. These are like the only people I'm still in contact with from high school and college. I mean, you have to understand, these are not just random people from my life. These are like some of my closest associates and friends. And then when you find out that they're the same people as in Edgar's circle, it's very, very surprising. Okay, so as we went through yesterday, are there great secrets being held? This was uh, something a lot of people didn't catch on the way they did the reflection on the poster for the Da Vinci Code. And of course, what is the eye in the triangle on top of the pyramid? Uh, is there a message that's being given that we're not fully getting access to? Gore's inconvenient truth, sure, that looks like smoke, not. That looks like a galaxy. And here's the Milky Way from the top down. Uh, there's our sun, so you can see this is about where we are. So we're not all the way out at the edge. We're kind of in the middle. But doesn't this look sort of like crosshairs to sort of point towards the galactic center and suggest that there's some sort of galactic alignment that's going on here? So later in this talk, you're going to hear about interplanetary climate change, which is how this movement into a new area of energy in our galaxy is, in fact, actually causing all the planets in the solar system to experience changes just like the ones we see on Earth. So this is far from an isolated phenomenon. There's also these new physics discoveries that keep leaking out, and they always relate to sacred geometry. The idea in this case of the dodecahedron, which is 12 pentagonal faces that kind of looks like a soccer ball if you make it into a sphere. 
They actually found out, uh, these scientists uh, discovered that the background radiation from when the universe was first created has arranged itself into this odd geometric pattern. And that's been proven. So then the question is, okay, what is the force that would cause that type of geometry to emerge in the formation of the universe? As we're going into the 2012 subject, of course, crop circles have been on everybody's mind. This was the formation that came down a couple years ago, which started out in an unfinished way. You notice that all of these blocks are completely solid, and this area is solid as well. Well, the circle makers, whoever they are, came back, and when they came back, this is what we got. Now you have time markings and symbols from the Mayan calendar, okay? And the alignment of these winged disks in terms of what markers they're pointing to, which corresponds to the Mayan system and the Aztec system, gave you an exact time reference of the length of time between when this was created and 2012, the end of the Mayan calendar. So this is a self-referential 2012 diagram given to us by whoever is behind the circle phenomenon. This is uh, one of many crop circles which seems to suggest that the secret to understanding 2012 and this mystery that we're dealing with right here in our talk today is in vibration. That looks an awful lot like a vibrating puddle of liquid. This is what happens when you take vibration to the next step. You get sacred geometry, and I'm going to show you more about that in a second. If you can imagine, this is a sphere and a cube and then another sphere. This is the Froxfield chromosome formation. Obviously, the circle makers are saying, you know, 2012, pay attention to your DNA, right? Except here's the thing. The chromosome's all broken up. And that's what happens before there's about to be a cell metamorphosis. Now, this is even more interesting. Check this out. What does that look like to you? A double helix. Okay, and there's 12 stations. Then down here, you get an even weirder thing. You get a triple helix, but they still have that, that same formation, and then boom, what's this? And look at the timelines. This is less than a month apart in 1999, and this came out in 96. So it appears that there is a message being given about the basic nature of DNA changing somehow. This is another crop formation which shows you DNA very, very clearly. As you can see that it's twisting and you can see the ladder and the helixes. So there's something very interesting going on here. Now this is one of the most staggering formations that's ever come down. And as I said yesterday, the idea that two drunken Englishmen stomped it down <laughs> with a funny hat and a string and board after coming back from the bar one night, it just doesn't fly. This is much too complex to be something that could have been done without an elaborate. And, and you know, the thing is, I mean, these, there have been some cases where formations like this have been documented as showing up within a one hour period. Like somebody's out there at night, they see nothing, and then there's lights and the dogs start barking and everything goes nuts, and then all of a sudden, boom, there it is. So this is showing you the geometry of the tetrahedron, uh, which here's a, a drawing of it. This is the frozen vibration that is one of the principal energy fields that moves through planets, as you can see in this diagram. Uh, it shows up at 19.5, which is Richard Hoagland's thing. He's speaking tonight uh, at 7. Um, so here's your uh, animation of the actual great red spot, which is at the limb of the tetrahedron down here and Jupiter. And this also extends through the great dark spot on Neptune. This extends through uh, a shield volcano on Mars called Olympus Mons, all throughout the solar system. So here's the secret. This is just a puddle of water that's got ordinary particles of sand in it called colloids. And those colloids are then vibrated on perfect sound frequencies like the white keys on the piano. And what you get is this interesting geometric shape.